Hey, what's up, y'all? This is uh, Pastor Bowser, Cornelius Bowser, known on the streets as Wacky Corn. Used to be, not anymore. Uh, that's my former street name. But this is a letter to inform my little homies about three facts. And these facts are that, number one, I love you. Number two, I understand what you're going through. Number three, and above all else, I want you to understand the negative effect that killing someone will have on you and the community. First of all, I want you to know that I love you. I did not always have this love in my heart because I did not know what love was. When I lived the gang life, my homies would tell me they loved me and my reply would be the same to them. You know, hey, I love you too, homie. I would even go as far as telling them how I would catch a bullet for one of them and I would die for them. Of course, they would answer back with the same kind of reply as, as what I gave. But this so-called homie love is so elusive. It is a difficult thing to define or nail down. One moment your homie is telling you that he loves you, but at the same time, he is allowing you to destroy and ruin your life. The greatest tragedy of homie love is that the same one who says, I love you, homie. I love you, cuz. I love you, blood may be the one to kill you. Love doesn't lead you down the road of annihilation. If you love someone, you will be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him or her because, you know, we have a lot of female young ladies out there too. So love does not cause injury to anyone. Love will never give up on you or and, and, and love cares more for others than it does itself. It puts up with anything. It doesn't fly off the handle and it will not leave you hanging. That's what love is all about. The so-called homie love is not even committed to the street code. Homie love is only committed to self. The same people who say they love you today will turn around and blow your head off tomorrow. And if you get arrested with one of your homies for a homicide, you can rest assured that he will look out for himself and not you. That means he will snitch on you. You can't nail down homie love because the rules keep changing. Homie love is so elusive. I once had that kind of love, you know, homie love. But now I know what love is. And I promise you, I have this love for you. Now you may ask, how can you love me when you don't even know me? I can love you because it is my nature to love. Have you ever heard the story about the scorpion and the frog? It is a fable about a scorpion asking a frog to carry him across a river. The frog is afraid of being stung during the trip, but the scorpion argues that if it stung the frog, the frog would sink and the scorpion would drown. The frog agrees and begins carrying the scorpion, but midway across the river, the scorpion does indeed sting the frog, dooming them both. When that's why, the scorpion explains that it is simply it in its nature to do it. The fable is used to illustrate the view that the behavior of some creatures or of some people is irrepressible, no matter how they are treated and no matter what the consequences. Love is something that has no respect of person. Just like it is the nature of the scorpion to sting, it is my nature to love. And I can't help but to love you no matter who you are, what you have done, or how you are treated, or how you treat me. I love you from the heart. Secondly, I understand what you're going through. I once was a gang banger. I can honestly tell you that I was a career banger. <laughs> I love my homies more than I love my mother. I abandoned everything for my set and my homies, and I was willing to die for the cause. I've been shot at numerous times. I can't even count. I have been in shootouts, gang riots, race riots. I've seen my homies die right in front of me. You know, I lost a lot of homies to the gang banging lifestyle. They either be killed by rivals or by one of our own, or and some of my homies even killed by the police want you to know I'm a true OG. I'm a true homie. And I was there when this gang banging thing started in San Diego. And I have seen how it has destroyed individuals, families, and communities. I have seen the pain, hurt, anger, 
bitterness and the numbness in which gangbanging have produced in the life of the gangster. I myself have experienced them all and I understand. I've been in the gang lifestyle for, for, uh, from the 70s going into the 80s and I've been out of it for 31 years and sometimes I still have nightmares. Today I see many of my homeboys trying to cope with the past by drinking, smoking dope, living in denial, and always looking over their shoulders because they know that there is no statute of limitation on murder. Any day the law can show up at their house with an arrest warrant. If you are not living with that kind of dread, I tell you, don't go out there and do something where you have to do that. Now thirdly, to all the gang members that want to have notches on their belt identifying them as a killer, oh he's a killer. Think about this. In the Bible, when Cain killed his brother Abel, God put a curse on him, made him a fugitive and a tramp. When a curse is pronounced upon you, evil will never leave your house. You will be plagued with diseases and sicknesses. God will give you a restless heart, longing eyes, and a sick soul. You will live in constant jeopardy, terrified of every shadow, never knowing what you will meet around the next corner. The victim's blood would cry out from the ground to God against you. After David killed Uriah, God brought a curse on David's household. His son raped his daughter. His other son killed the son who raped her and then took the throne from David, though it was just for a brief moment. Another son tried to take the throne from David and King David was also afflicted with sicknesses. Those who live by violence will die by violence. In addition, once reality sets in and you come down from being high on drugs or high on yourself and you find yourself doing life in prison for your acts of violence, it will be like waking up to a nightmare. You will not be able to reverse your actions with no amount of tears, regret or agony. When you are released from prison, you will not walk out, but you will be carried out in a box. And you need to know that God said, I will punish those who do wrong. I will repay them. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you want to be, get out of the gang lifestyle, then you can get in contact with me and give me a holler because whatever you talk to me about will be confidential. And we're all here to help you. So I want to say God bless you and warn you and encourage you to do the right thing. This is to my little homies. God bless you.